So good afternoon, everybody. Welcome, welcome to our May general meeting. This is going to be our last meeting of the school year. We will probably be picking up with another meeting probably in late August or early September, right before school begins. Um, but thank you all for coming on a holiday. So let's start off by what is U of T solidarity? Um, before we do that, um, Jay Werner is gonna be assisting me with um, presenting important information all about the ERI, end of year events, um, end of year protocols, news from the, from the U of T, um, and also what we know about the changes to retiree healthcare. Um, Dan Leopold is also my colleague and he will be monitoring the chat. So let me now quickly go and rename someone else. Okay, okay great. All right, excellent. So, so what is UFT Solidarity? Um, most people here I recognize, and I've and I know you've been going to our meetings before. So for the purpose of that conversation, I'm not going to spend a ton of time. But basically, UFT Solidarity is a caucus. So a caucus, you can kind of think of it like either an interest group or a political party within the whole union system. So in the union system, there is Unity Caucus, which has been the dominant force since the U of T was founded in, in the 1960s. And the U of T Unity has been in control of everything since then, since that time period. Um, of course, there's always been small minor parties or caucuses vying for control over the union with debate, with, you know, ranging levels of success. Um, so UFT Solidarity was founded in 2014. We founded, we were founded out of a fringe group called Don't Train Educators um, because we decided that the best way to really make change is to try to reform the, the UFT from within. Uh, we have run now in, man, how many, we, we, we run now in two UFT elections and we've gained members and we gained influence over time. Um, this particular year, you know, I'm particularly proud that we have been really focused and hyper-focused on safety. Um, Jay, do you want to touch on some of the stuff that we've accomplished this, this year? Well, we, we accomplished a lot this year. Um, we could start with, what was it, September? With the accommodations for people, not necessarily people who have medical conditions themselves, but people who are caretakers of those who do have medical conditions. You know, if you, if you live with an elderly parent or you are you were concerned about going into work, possibly catching the virus or bringing it home with you on your clothing, let's say, you know, we got you a medical accommodation or we, we, we were able to get a medic, medical accommodation because we decided to sue the city. And unlike solidarity, excuse me, and solidarity, unlike unity, we do not have a huge war chest. We do not have unlimited funds. So we had to crowdsource to get the funding for that. Luckily, we were able to get it done. And now we, 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 a lot of us have had medical accommodations as a result. So that was a wonderful thing that we did. Uh, it's the, I think that's the biggest thing that we did. Um, what else did we do? What else did we do? I'm not, um, we've, we've- Go on. I'm sorry. What? I mean, you. I mean, you and Quinn did, at a, did a really phenomenal job. I I remember at, at a few of our early meetings talking about safety because so many of our members who couldn't get a remote accommodation or even a family accommodation were very concerned about coming into school. And I think you and Quinn did a really amazing job at soothing and and a lot of members' fears. I mean, I definitely Thank felt you. the ease listen to you guys talk about. Thank it. you. I mean, I I didn't I I didn't necessarily consider that an accomplishment of solidarity. I just thought that that was just something that, that, that peep, someone should do. And since, you know, Quinn and I had the knowledge and the ability to do it, it made sense. Yep. So, so yeah, we could call that a, a, a solidarity accomplishment. I like that. That's, yeah, okay, let's use yep. that. Um, one thing that we are doing now currently is that a large number of substitute teachers have been contacting us. Um, they, have, they have been assigned teacher programs, but they have not been compensated. Um, so I was talking to James Eterno about it and James Eterno and I did some digging and we discovered that, that substitute teachers are protected by article five of the UFT contract. 
and as a result of our deep of our digging we are going to be reaching out to mike sill tomorrow about filing a grievance in honor of those subs who are not getting their rightfully due pay um, we've heard from so far 35 substitute teachers and we know this is just the tip of the iceberg so we're going to do what we can to fight for our substitute teachers because they are due pay members and they also are voting members as well and unfortunately it's a shame that they are not getting the, the respect that they truly deserve by coming in to dangerous situations potentially um you know cover taking care of children while teachers are away or out and we just need to do right by them so that's what makes us different from unity if you want to see a really great timeline created by council member claudia giordano who cannot be here today um you can click on the link so it is to be in the agenda does anyone need the copy of the agenda raise your hand if you need a copy of the agenda and i'll drop it again in the chat okay all right so important events so before we get to the meaty stuff we're going to talk about the light and fluffy stuff first so by now many of our members have expressed interest in meeting us in small socially distant relatively safe gatherings a lot of our members have thankfully been, been vaccinated and are taking proper precautions um and they have requested us throw a end of year party so because of social distancing matters we are going to be hosting two small parties um, in outdoor settings at places that have good setups for outdoor seating. Um, so one of them is going to be in City Island on June 18th um, after school, probably will be like sometime after 3.30. And we're going to host another one uh, in Brooklyn, in the greens, in the Greenwood section of Brooklyn on, on June 19th in the afternoon before the, before the rush comes. Um, so limited slots will be available. We encourage you to only RSVP if you know you can make it because we're trying to keep the list of invites small. Not, not because we're being mean, but simply because we're trying to keep everybody safe. And of course, don't, if you don't feel comfortable going to a gathering, you know, you're not obligated to go or you, or you can come, you can sit in a face cover and you can just sit and chat with us. Um, also a quick note about chapter leader and delegate elections in your schools. Um, a lot of our members have been telling us that they are running. Um, one great thing that Solidarity has done is that we are creating like a really good network of chapter leaders and delegates who are running. People who previously have told me, yo, I didn't think about running for a delegate, but I'm running for delegate in my school because nobody has had a position in years. And I think I can do a really good job at helping my, my members and supporting them. So we have a lot of members who are running. Um, if you haven't received any information about when your U of T election will be in your school, don't worry. I am still waiting in my school and I actually have a really good chapter leader who is super on top of things. Um, the U of T said that elections will be held between May 15th and June 15th. So expect your chapter to hear about these elections in, the in, in, in a couple coming days. Of course, if you still haven't heard anything by potentially Friday or even, or even that following Monday, I strongly encourage you to reach out to your um, to your election committee. If you don't know who is on the election committee, ask your chapter leader. If your chapter leader is not being responsive, go to your go go to your district rep. If your district rep is not being responsive, go to the borough rep. If the borough rep's not responding to you. Go to Leroy Bohr. You just keep on escalating, escalating, and escalating. You just go on up. So, also. If you don't know who is running and what they're standing for, you know, you got you gotta demand it. You gotta demand that you know. So in my school, we actually had a we right now the only position that is electable is the delegate position because both the chapter leader and the para rep have no one oppose them. So for delegate, we have our, we had our three candidates do like a little town hall and, mem and members were able to pose questions to the delegate candidates. Um, the delegate candidates gave statements. So members got to hear what they stood for. So if you're if you haven't done that in your school, strong suggest you do that. Suggest it. Um, talk to your chapter leader about it. Or if anything, you know, do your own work and reach out to the people who are running and just say, "Hi, would you like to prepare a statement or a poster that that talks about why people should vote for you?" Because members will only vote for you if they know you and if they trust you. So as so long as you have these two things. You gotta be prepared to work, of course, but if you have those two things, you can potentially beat them. Okay, four is gonna be quick and easy. 
for our resources. So we have a number of discontinued teachers in, in, in presence for us, with us today. So discontinued basically is basically when the DOE fires you. So if you are not tenured, you can be let go at any time. And if you're discontinued, you typically only get between a month's notice. So for discontinued teachers, it is devastating, but Solidarity has provided a really great guide. Um, one of our great members, Soap Lover, who is um, um, who, who was using who was using his um his his pseudonym, he has been a really great help for discontinued teachers in the past. Um, I myself would not be here teaching and leading Solidarity if it weren't if it weren't for him. So the discontinued teacher guide is found in link 4A in your agenda. And I strongly encourage you that if you know someone in your school who has been discontinued, please share the link with them because it could potentially save their career. Um, if you are an ATR, we also have a similar guide. We have a guide for ATRs to help, to help you navigate the process of being accessed and find your and trying to navigate yourself in a new school. We're hoping that there will be no accessing this year um, considering that there is going to be potentially a buyout and early retirement incentive. But in case you are an ATR and you haven't found a position yet, the guide is here for in point 4B. And of course, if you are a teacher who is neither discontinued nor an ATR, we have a general toolkit for you all. So you can click on the link, refresh your screen, and then you can view a list of Solidarity's guides and toolkits that we've developed over the years. Okay. So I don't think Jay is back yet, unfortunately, um, but uh, we are gonna go over some basic things um, because a large number of you are wondering, you know, what is the deal with the coming school year? What do we know so far? Keep, keep in mind that a lot of these things are subject to change. Um, and these, this, all the information I have is based on stuff that I've heard at the executive board meeting, the town hall and the delegate assembly. So. Unfortunately, I do not have Michael Mulgrew's ear. Michael Mulgrew is not my is not my best friend. He is not going Lydia? to tell me. Yes. Are we going to save questions in the chat for the end, or should I tell you about them as they appear? Um, let's see. Did, did anything come up regarding um, discontinued teachers, ATRs, the toolkit? Or we have a question about uh, union being a union delegate. Yes. Go ahead. What is the question? I put my. This is from Lawrence. Uh, Wait a second. Lawrence, Lawrence Bernstein, I think it is. Yes. I put my name in for your delegate. Am I allowed to ask the election committee to ask who is running? Absolutely. You need to know who your opponents are. Your, your election committee should have informed the chapter who is running. If they're not doing that job, then you bring it to the chapter leader, then you elevate to your district rep, then you elevate to the borough rep or Leroy Barr. You do not take it lying down. Thank you, Lydia. You are welcome always. Thank you, Dan. Any other questions regarding elections? I answered Fran's question already. We're good? Okay, sweet. Okay, so let us go on to the to the 2021-2022 school year, of course. So regarding medical accommodations for staff, according to Mulgrew and also my, my district rep, uh, medical accommodations for staff will sunset on the last day of school. Um, and unfortunately, if you are in, if you're working for some, if you're working in summer school, we know 683, um, chapter 683 for special ed, that is going to be in person. Um, the only way they, they are allowing kids um, in 683 to attend summer school remotely is if they are very medically fragile. Um, still not sure if teachers would, if those teachers will be able to work with those kids remotely or if they'll have to report to a building. But for now, medical accommodations will end on the last day of school for this year. Summer school will be in person. Um, Mulgrew is saying that if they cannot get a large number of staff to go to to work summer school the city may have to offer us an incentive to work which does make sense especially if you get a large influx of kids for the summer rising summer school program um, as for the start of the school year um, i just heard that the cdc is has removed is removing um mandated you know mandated masking for vaccinated staff indoors um, you know, now, unfortunately, th this unfortunately is not the forum to be debating this. 
Um, but keep that in mind. Um, Mulgrews stated that they're going to try to see if they can keep the three foot rule in place for September. But of course, as we've, as we've seen all year, things are constantly changing and constantly shifting. I truly will not be surprised if in September there are no, there, you know, there, there, there's close to like zero COVID protocols in place. Um, truly, truly, I wouldn't be surprised. Nothing, nothing surprises me anymore. Um, also, medical staff, since Mulgrew and the and and the city are really pushing to, for in-person teaching and in-person learning, Mulgrew wants to push for close to ninety percent of students to attend school in person. Now, there will be a remote option for kids. There is rumors that Mulgrew is going that Mulgrew and the city are creating like this remote academy. We are not sure if this remote academy is going to be across the entire DOE or if we'll be based in different boroughs or different districts, but that is definitely a rumor that we've been hearing. Um, I also know from parents who have, who have kids in the DOE, they have been sent letters talking about opting your kid in or out of in-person learning for the coming school year. I'm sure things are gonna change as time goes on. But for now, unless you are a staff member that is protected by, by, you know, you know, by, by, by federal, by federal law, because you are physically handicapped, um, you cannot, you know, climb stairs, and you have to be accommodated, you know, on the first floor of your building, um, those will only be, those will be the only mandated medical accommodations for staff for the coming school year, as far as we know. Mogu has said this in a couple of forums. So has my chapter leader, so has my district rep. So I'm assuming for now, don't expect to have medical accommodation for next year. Sorry. Um, okay, so the contract, Mulgrew also mentioned that because the MOA, will, the MOA, the Memorandum of Agreement Oops. will be expiring at the Lydia? end. Yes, sir. So there was a, in the chat, just saw, uh, Francis and Madam made a comment, not, but it's not fully true. Any student who chooses to can be remote in 683. That was sent, was, was sent out to the parents. Okay, thank you. Thank you for letting me know that. Because, because I understood Mulgrew saying it was different, but thank you, Francis, for, for clarifying. Great, all right, the contract. So our, our memorandum of agreement, the temporary con contract that we, that the union agreed to in March of last year, will be expiring at the end of June. So in that case, we will be going back to our old contract come September. And of course, there's already conversations about us engaging in, con in contract talk and conversation with, um, with the UFT and the city. Uh, remember, our UFT contract will be, will, will be expiring at the end of next school year. So there's already word from Mulgrew that they're going to start you know, cr creating um, you know, consultation committees to review areas of the contract from across all the different chapters. So UFT Solidarity thankfully was given two spaces in, 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 the, in these committees the last time we had, we had a contract negotiation. So we're going to push hard to hopefully get more seats this time. Um, so that means we're gonna, we'll be going back in September to extend a day on Mondays and Tuesdays. Um, SBOs. Um, talk to your chapter leader and district rep about SBOs. I know, I know SBOs are going to be um, done remotely, um, according to Debbie Poulos of, of, um, of, of U of T Central. And also election buddy will also be most likely where you'll be, where, um, where um, your U of T chapter elections will be hosted as well. Um, evaluations, we are presuming that since the contract will be going back to normal in September. So will evaluation. So as far as I can tell, we're still gonna be under Danielson. So be prepared for that. Of course, if you have issues with Danielson, UFT Solidarity has a guide for that. Um, I will later on link the guide that UFT Solidarity has in this agenda. Um, finally, point E, vaccines for kids and staff. So for now, vaccines for kids and staff is not meant are not mandated. Uh, I did hear though that Eva Moskowitz of Success Academy is mandating her staff and definitely her staff, her in-school staff members to get vaccinated. That is mandated. 
But as far as I can tell for now, the vaccine is not mandated for staff in the DOE. And for now, it is not mandated for kids. But anything, of course, can change. Does anyone have a question about the 2021-2022 school year? Please raise your hand or drop something in the chat. We're good? Cool. Okay. Sweet. We may actually be finished early. All right. Um, so the privatization of Medicare. So this is why we all need to be worried. Um, so UFT Solidarity has allied itself with a retiree caucus for UFT members called Retiree Advocate. Retiree Advocate is running in an election against Tom Murphy. So Gloria Brandman, um, our own Gloria Diordano, as well as several other UFE Solid Solidarity members have been, have been asked to run on the slate for retiree advocate. Um, now, this is not just an issue for retirees. As we know, the city has been attacking our healthcare for years. A couple of years ago, first year teachers were forced to buy into the HIP program for, 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 for the medical. We know Bloomberg has not been a fan of, of teachers and he's been chipping away at our medical as well. Things are only just going to get worse. If Mogru and the UFT is willing to go after retirees whom historically have been how Mogru has maintained power for 60 plus years of the UFT. Remember, one retiree is worth two in-person members. So Mulgrew likes to focus his attention on the retirees because retirees vote in big, massive numbers. If Mulgrew was willing to throw retirees under the bus and force them into a Medicaid Advantage program, which from what I've been told is substandard care, is super expensive, and it is a major detriment. Um, there was a really phenomenal um, webinar about the issues regarding the Medicare Advantage program. They had a medical doctor who was also a union activist on there talking about why the Medicaid Advantage program is bad. Now, I remember Dan was telling me that he was listening to one of the town halls and Dan, do you want, do you want to talk about how you heard Mulgrew's false anger? It's just that, uh, Mogu has two faces, the one that he shows the rank and file, and the one that he shows actually maybe more than two, one, then the ones that he shows the retirees. I don't know what he's going to show, what, but I, I went to both the retiree one and the UFT one, the, uh, the rank and file member one, and he was basically saying that it was kind of out of our control because that, let me see if I get my notes up here about this. Um, give me one second. Uh, here it is. Here. Um, trying to write, I don't, I'm, I don't feel like I'm BS. Uh, you don't have to. You don't, I mean, well, I, you good? Okay, yes, here we go. Municipal Labor Council negotiates health care the group. This is for in-service and retiree members. We need to form a standing healthcare committee for the UFT to investigate how hospitals are billing us. So that was one of his major things was how hospitals, what hospitals are doing with the money that they're billing us. Now, that's what he was giving his right to sign toward. Now, I don't know if that's what he's supposed to be. I don't know if that's, the, if that's him trying to distract or kind of, you know, go, hey look at this thing that's happening with the hospitals and forget about medicare part b look at this maybe that's his attempt i don't know anything that comes out of mogu's mouth i find kind of suspect he's lied to us so many times in the past no absolutely and this is a major wake-up call for in-service members if mogu is willing to throw retirees under the bus if he's he's willing to, to if he's willing to throw first year teachers and force them into the HIP healthcare program in their first year of teaching, we know that he will eventually go after people who are more seasoned. 
So My this, question is, is, is he, because this is being done across all the municipal unions. Correct. Across the state. So my question is, is he saying at the table of all the municipal union leaders, he said, you know what? I'm going to say the teachers do this first. Or is he going along with what the other municipal leaders are doing? Or is he, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I wonder if he's the odd man out in the group or if he's, I don't know. I mean, Claudia sent me this very interesting email um, from that, that, in, which, in which Gloria Bramman, who is running for the um, Retiree Advocates Caucus against, against Tom Murphy and Unity, that basically stated, and Gloria basically made, you know, kind of made the inference, like, you know, based on what we're reading, it seems like no unions are really making a fuss about this. I mean, other than the other than CUNY's um, professor professor union and adjunct union, they are the only ones that are really making a big fuss and are really trying to push back. We haven't heard anything from the police union, from the firefighter union. Have we heard anything from 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 the other New York State locals? I haven't heard anything. I haven't even seen a kerfuffle about about the Medicaid Advantage program on any of the Long Island teacher groups that I'm on. So it may just be that people either are just really clueless or their union is just really trying to sell them snake oil. Well, right, so I just, I don't know how much of it is, is Mogu saying it versus the state saying it. Correct, I, yeah. But still, this is a major area of concern. One thing that we can all do is just, by following the Retiree Advocate group on Facebook, like them on Facebook, if you know someone who is a retired teacher or a retired para, retired UFT member, encourage them to vote for the Retiree Advocate Caucus. Make a yeah. statement. Yeah. Retirees love Mulgrew because as Dan said, Mulgrew has a space that he only shows to them. This is a big slap in the face. We need to wake up. We have and a if comment. Retirees uh, choose to vote even, even, if, even if Unity wins again. If enough retirees vote for a retiree advocate, Mogru's going to notice, and that and that may cause a ripple effect. Dan, go for it. I heard you trying. Yeah, to talk. this is from Francis, Francis Amato. Our insurance has gotten so much worse over the years. He will screw us too. Hell, he'll he'll, uh, he'll look what they uh, look what they did to IVF coverage. They made it worse under the guise that they made it better with the new law passed. I know so many teachers struggling now with the new rules that they change month to month. Mm -hmm. what, are, what we had before with copay was much better than what we have now. Yeah, I believe it. I truly believe it. All right, so keep your eyes and ears on the Retiree Advocate Caucus. Encourage your folks to vote for them and just stay awake, stay woke. All right, point seven, the early retirement incentive. Um, based on what Mulgrew said at the delegate assembly yesterday, um, things are slightly more positive. There is still no agreement with New York City um, yet, but from what Mulgrew said this time around compared to how things were looking on Monday, things are, there, 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 there is increased communication. So don't expect us to hear about the ERI until June. Truly, I was hoping that they were, they would have something ready for us by by you know you know by by, by mid May, end of May. But right now, it's looking like it's going to be later. So for now, just hang tight. I suggest try 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 to see if you can book if you can book some kind of pension consult now. If you think you have you know the the age and the years, but then again, we still don't know what exactly this incentive is going to look like. So stay tuned. Has anyone like looked at TRS lately? Because TRS had something posted that was very generic, but since then I haven't seen anything being shared or posted. While we're on the subject of TRS, people might want to remind might want to remind people that coming up soon will be the next part of the uh, the last uh, lump sum paycheck. Remember yeah. a split. So if people want to, if they haven't already, max out their TDA contribution so that. It, doesn't get eaten up in taxes when we do get that uh, check. It might be, because that takes a while for that change to go over when you max it out. Yes. Thank you, Dan, for the reminder.
And finally, our last point is applying for a new school. Um, so I have a feeling that this year, regardless of when the ERI comes out, there will be a lot of movement and there may be a lot of vacancies in schools. I don't predict that there will be much accessing simply because of the so simply because of the, um, the stimulus as well as teachers looking to retire. Um, one of my good friends who cannot be here today heard, of, heard a rumor from his own principal that states that there are a lot of principals who have already filed their retirement papers. So we may be seeing different leaders in our schools so if you know someone who is looking for a leadership position as an AP or principal, tell them not to fear, tell them that they may have more opportunities than they have in a couple of years. Um, if you are looking to apply to a new school, uh, we have this really good comprehensive um, guide. I made this guide last year thinking that last year would be a really good year to move schools. It really wasn't, I made, I, I made a really bad prediction, but the guide is still good. It still, it still contains a lot of really great things, including a list of principals to avoid, principals who are actually doing a really bang up job. We actually have a, ha, we actually have a care list now. So care stands for caring ministries really exist. So we have some good apples on there. We have our bad apple list, the annoy list. And we also have suggestions on how to do research for applying for a position, because guess what? Um, open market still doesn't have much on it. And open market kind of, is kind of a sham. I know some people have had luck on open market. Myself, I have not been that blessed, but using open market as well as cold calling, cold emailing and dropping off resumes and cover letters is a surefire way to find a new position based on my own experiences. Now, we it's 440, so we have a few minutes. So I would like to have you guys be dismissed early, but if you have a question that's about any of these topics, or about another topic, please raise your hand and we will call on you. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Lydia, someone asked a question about when we get the lump sum payment. That will be after the May 14th or 15th paycheck, correct, Dan? Because I, I got an email from, from um, Mulgrew that said in May. So I, I think it's, I think it takes, it, it's effective May fifteenth, but that's in the next paycheck, not the fourteenth. Okay, so it'll be in the so it'll be like May thirty first, I guess. Something like that. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Does anyone Lydia, have a hi? Hi, how are you, Lainey? How are you? Okay. So, um, medical accommodations. You said they're going to be next year. The only medical accommodations for next year, from what I've heard from Mulgrew my chapter leader and my district rep is that only you can only apply for a medical accommodation if you if you are in a protective class per federal law so if you cannot climb stairs your medical accommodation will be i that you oh, will like this it's it's not going to be about the covid no no anymore not anymore oh. unfortunately and what did you hear it's going to be a full time uh, going to school like monday to through friday the city is pushing for in-school learning five days a week. Um, Mulgrew is trying to make a goal of a quote minimum that 90% of all kids in the DOE will return to in-person learning. Of course, we'll see what parents decide because parents, as we know, vote with their feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, we don't know yet. Okay. We don't know yet. I mean, everything is honestly, this year is all it's just a big lesson and grace and just yeah. hanging tight and just trying not to get to scared because anything can anything can happen good and bad yeah when they're gonna know in the summertime when june august when i'm gonna know. the magic eight ball and i'm gonna hope and pray we'll find out for sure on august 1st yeah i'm gonna shake my magic eight ball and hope and pray it's sooner than later all right thank you so much you're welcome good to see you nice to see you too anybody else got a question Well, in that case, um, the, this meeting is recorded, of course. So if you need to share this link with a colleague or a friend, feel free to do so. It will be posted on our um, YouTube page um, this weekend. Otherwise, have a great rest of your day. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the rest of your May. And, keep, and, and please, if you, if you haven't done so already, 
on the agenda, you can find the sign up form to be, in, to be an official member. Please follow us on social media so we can keep you abreast of all the latest changes that are happening and have a great day. Thank you, everybody. We have another yeah, comment here about, about, about uh, questioning about the six foot rule. I just said, I, I actually answered that question previously. So um, for what Mul, from what Mulgrew said, they're, they may keep the three foot rule, but the way things are looking with the CDC making constant changes, I wouldn't bet on having a six foot rule in September. Yeah. All right, everybody. Have a Thank great you day. Very much. You too. Have a good weekend. Yes. Have a great day, everybody.